Pungazay Lai's boat was moving in the stream that went from Nagaipatanam to Kadakare. Santhana Muthan was also present in the theatre along with Pungazay Lai. The boat was approaching Kadakare. On the banks of the stream, golden yellow flowers spread their petals and spread their fragrance everywhere. A green parrot flew and sat on a flower. As fast as it sat, it swayed like a swing. The green parrot swooped as well and then pecked its golden flap with its coral nose. As the boat approached, the green parrot flew away screaming, Kiki, Kiki. If you are born, you must be born a green parrot. Said Punghuali. You think so? Who saw how much trouble, how much trouble? Sentinay Muthan said. Isn't it possible to fly in the infinite sky at will, despite all the worries and hardships? Is there any other pleasure than that? Said Punghuali. Some people catch a green parrot flying like that and put it in a cage. Sentine Muthan said. Yes, yes. Rajakumaris living in palaces keep green parrots in cages. Cruel Ras Asis. They cage parrots and play with them. If I were a city girl in some palace, I would poison the caged parrots and kill them. I would also poison the Rajakumaris who catch parrots and keep them in cages. If they hear you talk now, they'll call you a cruel monster too. Let me say it. I will be a Rakshasi, I will not be a Rajakumari. Why are you so angry with the Rajakumaris, Pungazali? If you go to see them, shouldn't you feel sorry for them too? Like green parrots in a cage, they too have to spend time in the palace. If they fail to escape and go outside, how much security? How much secrecy? How careful? Like you, they boarded the boat and took care of themselves. Can you go alone in the stream and the sea? Can you wander in the forest like a deer prancing at will? Who tells them to lie down? I didn't tell them. They too wander in the forest if they like. Wool is not enough, it also depends on their birth and upbringing. Like a parrot, you want to fly in the sky, is that possible? You were born and raised on the beach. That's why you can be so independent. People born and raised in palaces can't do that. Listen to one more fairy tale. Some days you are locked in a cage and fed by the hands of Rajakumaris. Accustomed parrots then open the cage and do not want to run away. They fly a short distance and circle and come back into the cage shouting screech, screech. I have seen this myself in the palaces of Tanjore and Palayare. I will never agree to be locked in a cage like that. If I were a parrot, I would bite the hand of Rajakumari who comes to give me nectar in a cage. You wouldn't want to be a parrot in a cage. You wouldn't want to be a princess in a palace, would you? I will never give up my life for poison. That's right, then shouldn't you also wish to marry the prince who lives in the palace? Dark clouds were gathering in the lower sky. Lightning flashed from time to time. The rumble of thunder was faintly audible. When Sendan heard Amuthan's last words, the lightning beams flashed from Punghwali's eyes. Who told you that I wanted to marry Rajakumaran? She asked angrily. Nobody told me, I said it myself. If you don't have such a desire in your heart, it's all right. Forget what I said. Sentine Muthan said. There was silence on the boat for a while. Sentine Muthan could hear the sound of the boat being pushed by the oar, the voice of the frogs, the sound of the seabirds and the sound of the ocean waves and the occasional thunder in the lower directions. Sentine Muthan cleared his throat and braved his heart and said, Pungazali. You said that Vandiyathevan revealed my private parts to you, didn't you? It would be better if you give your opinion about it. That's Kadakare's alarm. I may not get a chance to talk to you alone anymore. I have to leave tomorrow too. I will leave my mother alone in Tanjore. It's been a long time coming. He said. Why should Vandiyathevan send a messenger for you? Don't you have a mouth? I will ask you what you need to ask," said Punghuali. Well. I ask, will you marry me? Sinthane Muthan asked. Why are you asking me to marry you? said Punghuali. I have a secret desire for you, that's why. 
Do you have to get married if you have an intimate desire? It doesn't mean that such a thing should end. The world's custom has been like that. What will you give me if I marry you? Can you give me palace life, clothes, elephants, horses, and toothy maids? In the evening, I will teach you sweet divine Tamil songs. If you sing them in your sweet voice, your singing tongue will be sweet, my ears are sweet to hear. If we want, we can go to the temples and visit the Lord and sing the divine songs. Devotees who come to the temple will also enjoy listening to it. Flower Pot What can be in the world a sweeter life, a happier life? Think about it and tell me. After listening to what Sendan Amuthan had said, Feng Uzali smiled cheerfully. If we want, we can go to the temples and visit the Lord and sing the divine songs. Devotees who come to the temple will also enjoy listening to it. Flower Pot What can be in the world a sweeter life, a happier life? Think about it and tell me. After listening to what Sendan Amuthan had said, Feng Uzali smiled cheerfully. If we want, we can go to the temples and visit the Lord and sing the divine songs. Devotees who come to the temple will also enjoy listening to it. Flower Pot What can be in the world a sweeter life, a happier life? Think about it and tell me. After listening to what Sendan Amuthan had said, Feng Uzali smiled cheerfully. I will be happy to see those palaces fall down and crumble to dust. If Devendran doesn't want to marry maybe I will go to Vayudeva. Even though he already has many wives, I will ask him to marry me as there is no disadvantage. That's all, then in this world there will always be storms, whirlwinds and storms. Large trees can move and fall on attics, destroying them. The seagoing wooden vessels are hit by the storm and are scattered into particles. Those who travel in those ships fall into the turbulent sea and suffer. If there are Rajakumars and Rajakumaris among them, I will let them go to the bottom of the deep ocean, and I will leave the others alone to go. Want to ask then? This world should be set on fire. Punguzali, enough. Stop. You are talking like this because of some bitterness of mind, you are not speaking after thinking about it. It is my fault that I took the marriage talk to you without knowing your state of mind. Please forgive me for that. God should give you peace and give you peace. For that I I will be praying day and night. He said. Punguzali, who was sitting, suddenly stood up. She stared at a tree on the bank of the stream. Sendan Amudan also looked in that direction. A woman's face was visible among the branches. Sendan Amuthan was stunned to see his mother's expression on her face as she stood there for a moment. Later, he learns that she is not his mother. He surmised that it must be his great-grandmother, who Punguzali had said lived on the island of the giants. Punguzali jumped out of the boat and ran towards the lady.